Hi everyone, Falcon Rad here. I wanted to bring you a quick video about my long range FPV video setup. I often get questions about it in the uh, comments. So I'll uh, go over that here with you quickly. Uh, my setup is all analog. So I'm using the Orca FPV-1 goggles. These are pretty much on par with the Fat Shark HDO2s. Or actually, in my opinion, these are a little better than the Fat Sharks because they have more powerful computing ability in them. So they're they're kind of a little more future-proof than the HDO2s. I have a rapid fire module installed in it. I just got my Orcas with the rapid fire module so it all fits together nice and has the same coloring and everything. Uh, I use my rapid fire module on mode one uh, with I think a short sync lock. And I always use uh, two of the same antenna. I mean, I've, I've gone back and forth a couple times with mixing in a different antenna along with one of these, but I find I just always get the best video, the most solid video link when I use two of these seven turn helical antennas. I've got a video about uh, how to make these, how to make these yourself at home, as well as uh, on Thingiverse, you can find under Falcon Rad the, uh, the file for this uh, 3D print for the mount. I just connect them to my rapid fire with uh, some SMA extensions so I can have them comfortably up here on the middle of the goggles. I tried having them just off of uh, little SMA elbows here and they, they end up tipping down and stuff and coming unloosened. So I find this is the, the easiest way to, to have two of them on here without having to worry about retightening them and so on all the time. All right, from my uh, quad side of things, I'm using a TBS Unify HV SMA, and I always have it set to 800 milliwatts for long range FPV flights. Uh, it's connected to that is a Chur C Singularity. This is the only antenna I use on my, my long range FPV quads. This, this is a great antenna. Even on my uh, Flywoo Explorer, I took the atomic antenna off of that and put on this super lightweight UFL version of the GRC Singularity. And now the video on on the Flywoo Explorer is amazing solid. Even kilometers out, the video is perfectly clear on the Flywoo with one of these on it. One of the big things about your video antenna is you always want to have it for long range video that is. You want to have it way up in the air so that it's above your battery. So when your battery is on here, if your antenna is just a little stubby guy and it's down here, your battery is blocking the antenna's direct line of sight back to you, which means it's going to noticeably degrade your video signal. Having it way up here in the air above everything gives you the best chance possible of having a clear video signal. If you're using just one of the little stubby ones that screws right onto the SMA extension is only like an inch tall, that's not going to work for you for long range. Uh, if you have your antenna strapped to one of the carbon arms of your quad, perfectly fine, works great for freestyle, but it's not going to work for long range setup. You need to have your antenna way up, away from all the carbon and away from your batteries. Sorry, more, uh, more school buses of whitewater rafting expeditions heading up the road here. I'm so sorry about the noise. Yeah, that's, that's probably one of the biggest keys to having really good long range video is having a long antenna that does not get blocked by anything on your quad. And of course, while you're flying, um, you're gonna be maneuvering depending on what kind of pilot you are. If you're just cruising around and, and getting like general sort of landscape shots like this, then your antenna is always gonna be in the air up above your battery and your video is gonna stay pretty good as long as you keep line of sight and don't get um, a hill or a, a mountainside in between you and the quad. When you start doing things like diving things or doing flips and you can end up in positions like this where if the camera there, if you guys were, were my perspective, see, you can't see the antenna. It's blocked by the carbon and the battery. So if you're diving down a waterfall and you go inverted and then spin around, your video is going to go snowy and get a little bit get a little bit sketchy as you're in this position but then as you continue your turn and finish diving down your video will clear back up so you have to be you have to be anticipating that happening and be good enough on the sticks that you're you're comfortable following through on your movements during short bits of momentary video loss i'll show you a quick straightforward uh, example of that
and I, I know I'm doing this, I do this intentionally, I fly behind a rock and this rock has got a very high iron content, it's a volcanic plug, so it's sig video signal's not going to penetrate it, even if it's a thin rock. So my video just goes completely dead and I just keep cruising straight with, I know when I'm entering in, just hold the stick steady, if anything, a little to the left and uh, and I'll be fine. So I just hold it steady and this, the video, when you're flying, it kind of feels like the video's gone out for twice as long as it actually does. As long as you have those stick movements, uh, stick positions kind of prefigured before your video goes out and you're confident with your ability on the sticks, then you should be able to fly through it. And that's one of the reasons that I've gone with such uh, low cinematic rates. As well, when the video goes out, it just makes it so much easier to do small, steady stick movements and not not end up flipping the quad halfway over without realizing it because you've got like Mr. Steel rates. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like so that YouTube will show it to a few more people. I'd really appreciate it. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.